Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. Two Tuskegee Airmen head west the same day. The Bearhawk LSA will make its Sebring debut, and a company is developing a UAV to intercept other UAVs. Welcome to Airborne Unlimited, I'm Ashley Hale. Two more of the story Tuskegee Airmen have gone west, passing on the same day in their respective homes in Los Angeles. It's reported that Clarence E. Huntley Jr. and Joseph Chambray both died on January 5th. The two men enlisted in 1942 and both served as mechanics during the war, maintaining the P-39, P-47, and P-51 aircraft flown by the unit. They were both stationed in Italy as part of the 100th Fighter Squadron of the Army Air Force's 332nd Fighter Group in 1944. Bearhawk Aircraft is planning to have its Bearhawk LSA make a first-time visit to the U.S. Sport Aviation Expo in Sebring, Florida. The aircraft is the first Bearhawk LSA to be completed from a quick-build kit. According to Bearhawk's Mark Goldberg, the Bearhawk LSA is, quote, a rugged, sweet-handling airplane that is much stouter than most LSAs, end quote. The first Bearhawk LSA built from a quick-build kit has an empty weight of 818 pounds, including its starter and full electrical system. With full fuel of 30 gallons, the Bearhawk LSA has 322 pounds of useful load. At 75% power, the plane has a cruise speed of 118 miles per hour, while burning under 6 gallons per hour. At AirVenture 2014, the prototype was demonstrated in the Alaska STOL competition. It made a takeoff in 96 feet and landed in a distance of 130 feet. After the break, can you become an ace with a UAV interceptor? There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. The KSN 770 is an affordable, WAS-enabled, integrated MFD with a flexible hybrid user interface from Bendix King. Get your fingers on the 770's perfect blend of touchscreen and hard buttons. Easily control your GPS navigation, navcom, weather, traffic, and terrain in any condition. For more information, go to BendixKing.com. Welcome back. If you'd like to be a supporter of Airborne Unlimited, send an email to jim at aero-news.net. It only took about 12 years from the Wright brothers' first flight until airplanes were shooting at each other. So I guess we shouldn't be too surprised when we hear that a small UAV is being developed to knock down other small UAVs. A startup company is working to develop something it calls an intercept drone. It's designed to identify and disable a UAV that may be engaged in an illegal or otherwise nefarious activity. According to the company, the Rapier Intercept Drone operates autonomously and downs its targets by flying above it and dropping strings to tangle the rotors of the target UAV. The company claims that it can identify and overtake any commercial UAV on the market because the short flight times allow it to deliver more voltage to the aircraft's electric motors. It kind of makes us wonder, do you get to be called an ace if you take out five UAVs? Every Tuesday, we're going to start looking ahead at some of the most interesting events in the aviation universe. Here's this week's Aero Calendar. Starting this week on Wednesday the 14th and running through Saturday is the U.S. Sport Aviation Expo in Sebring, Florida. We're going to be covering this event on ANN, so if you can't make it there, we'll keep you posted. The 5th Annual Havasu Balloon Festival and Fair kicks off later this week on the 16th and runs through Saturday. The Havasu Balloon Festival has become the largest balloon festival in January. 
January 17th is the Wings and Wheels Business Aviation Day at the Air Terminal Museum at Houston Hobby Airport. Sponsored by the Houston Aeronautical Heritage Society, this month they celebrate the hardworking planes of business aviation. On January 20th, EPS Aviation Services, located on Peachtree DeKalb Airport, is featuring a seminar that will give you some solid information about garment aviation products and ADSB solutions. The EAA Ford Trimotor will be making an appearance in Midland, Texas on January 29th. Climb aboard one of the first mass-produced airliners and step back in time to aviation's golden age. Well, that's it for this week's Aero Calendar. After these messages, Cypress Airways is grounded. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro standby instrument. TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Since the early days of powered flight, pilots have struggled with landing in crosswinds. In fact, crosswinds and wind gusts cause more landing accidents than fog, thunderstorms, and icing combined. That's where the Redbird X-Wind SE comes in. By placing pilots in gusty crosswind conditions for extended periods of time, the X-Wind SE gives instructors all the time they need to teach the pilot the proper techniques for landing in crosswind conditions. For more information on Redbird X-Wind SE and Redbird's entire line of flight training devices, visit www.redbirdflightsimulation.com. AML's patent-pending wireless induction charging system eliminates confusion over those charging cables, cuts down cockpit cable clutter, and allows you and your passengers to fly cordless and eliminate the cable nightmare. www.aviationmodificationleaders.com Welcome back! With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. A decision by the European Commission for Competition has led Cyprus Airways to cease all operations. Over $76 million in state aid was deemed illegal. Unable to operate without the aid, Cyprus Airways pulled the plug. U.S. Senator Kelly Ayotte has been named as the chair of the Senate Commerce Committee on Aviation Operations, Safety, and Security. The subcommittee has jurisdiction over civil aviation with specific oversight responsibility for the FAA. It's not allowed to fly a UAV in a national park. John Cornish found that out when he posted a YouTube video of his flights at Quena Parker Lake. The government tracked him down with a cease and desist letter. Oops. SpaceX may receive the right to bid for U.S. Air Force launches this year. SpaceX sued the Air Force last year after United Launch Alliance was given an exclusive launch contract. Elon Musk must have made his point with the suit. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. The new year is off to a hot start for NASA's space launch systems, referred to as the SLS. The engine that will drive America's next great rocket to deep space has blazed through its first successful test. The RS-25, formerly the Space Shuttle main engine, fired up for 500 seconds, providing NASA engineers critical data on the engine controller unit and inlet pressure conditions. Four RS-25 engines will power SLS on future missions. Eight tests totaling 3,500 seconds are planned for the current development engine. Another development engine later will undergo 10 tests totaling 4,500 seconds. The second test series includes the first test of new flight controllers. The first flight test of the SLS will feature a configuration for a 77-ton lift capacity and carry an uncrewed Orion spacecraft beyond low Earth orbit to test the performance of the integrated system. Well, that's our program for Tuesday, January 13th. Join us every weekday for the best in aviation and aerospace news. I'm Ashley Hale. Thanks for watching.